Since 1946, thousands of people have gathered every year in the little town of Santa Claus, Indiana for a day of thrilling rides and family fun. Holiday World and Splash and Safari has long been a staple of southern Indiana, and today people from all across the country come to enjoy some of the best rides that the world has to offer. 160 years ago, however, this little town was just starting off. It was 1856, and German immigrants who had settled in the area were having a meeting to decide on their town name. Their original pick of Santa Fe, Indiana, was rejected due to the existence of another town in Indiana with the same name. Legend has it that a faint sound of sleigh bells filled the room as a cold gust of wind blew the doors of the church open on Christmas Eve. The bells made the children cry out, Santa Claus, it's Santa Claus, and the decision was obvious. With a name like Santa Claus, this small town was destined to be a hot spot for people of all ages who eagerly awaited the holiday season. However, it wasn't until a Navy sailor named Jim Yellig came along that this town began to embrace its full potential. He was at Brooklyn, New York Navy Yard on a ship, and they wanted to have a Christmas party for, as they called them, underprivileged children. That was the word that was used in those times. And he, they knew that he was from a town near Santa Claus. And they asked him if he would um, put on the Santa Claus suit for children and, and do that. And he said he so much enjoyed it. He, he just had um, so much fun doing it, felt so good doing it. And, and, you know, his words were watching the children's eyes and seeing how excited they got, how happy they were. He made the vow that if he ever, uh, if he came home uh, alive, he would be Santa Claus, and he did become Santa Claus. Starting in the early 1930s, Yellig volunteered at the post office to make sure every letter written to Santa, a tradition that had started in 1914 with local postmaster James Martin, received an answer. Today, under the command of Santa's Elves Incorporated, up to 12,000 letters are answered in as many as 65 different languages, with each child receiving an answer in the language in which they wrote their letters. Throughout the 1930s, Santa Claus, Indiana, saw many changes to help it live up to its big name. Attorney Milton Harris built a factory to build sleighs pulled by reindeer, and after he made an agreement with the Curtis Candy Company, he built a candy castle in 1935. Carl A. Barrett opened a park near the main road that contained the famous 22-foot-tall granite statue of Santa Claus, a replica of which is still visible today. However, when Evansville industrialist Louis J. Cook realized that children who visited Santa Claus were still leaving disappointed, he decided to create a place that would be memorable for people of all ages. On August 3, 1946, he opened Santa Claus Land, the world's first theme park. During its opening season, Santa Claus Land had a toy factory with real elves at work, a souvenir shop, and its only ride still in existence today, the Mother Gooseland Train, now known as the Freedom Train. The most important element of the park, however, was a real Santa, a role Jim Yellig happily embraced. And you know, people say sometimes, how long did your dad play Santa Claus? And I said, he never played it. It was not something he made up. He felt he was, and he took it very seriously. Initially, the idea of building an amusement park as a retirement project made members of Lewis's family somewhat anxious. They thought that was really silly because there wasn't anything here. When we incorporated Santa Claus, Indiana in 1967, I believe there were 27 uh, numbers, but in the 20s, people living here. That, it was so small. And so, you know, why would you want to build an amusement park in an area where there are no people, <laughs> there's no activity, and um, you're in the middle of cornfields, and you have to drive to get here. So it was considered foolish. When Bill, Lewis's son, returned home from World War II, he was curious about his father's project. Although he was skeptical about the part's viability at first, he soon overcame his doubts and became the president of Santa Claus Land in 1948. My husband was a, a dreamer and a risk taker, uh, I think a real definition of an entrepreneur, and a man who believed that he could fulfill his dream and his vision. He then married Jim Yellig's daughter, Pat, fittingly nicknamed Santa's daughter, in 1960. Throughout the next few decades, the park continued to gain popularity, 
By 1984, it was evident that the park needed to expand in order to accommodate its growing number of visitors. These changes included the addition of two new sections, Halloween and Fourth of July. Not fitting in with the Christmas theme, the addition of these two sections marked the name change from Santa Claus Land to Holiday World. With the new name came a new era of big rides and even bigger smiles. Will Cook, the son of Bill and Pat Cook, started working on the Raging Rapids, his first project for Holiday World in 1989. By 1990, the ride was fully functional and ready to open. The addition of a water park, Splash and Safari, in 1993 really put Holiday World on the map. And one of our friends said, you all need to do a water park. As hot as it is in summers in Indiana, you need to do a water park. So we made that decision, uh, actually on his recommendation, and seeing that it was being very successful in other parks. And there's not much, there is practically no water attractions in our area. Since its establishment, Splash and Safari has continued to grow and is the largest water park in Indiana today, covering 27 acres. In 1995, the addition of its first major wooden roller coaster, the Raven, marked the beginning of Holiday World's transition from a simple, kid-friendly theme park to a dream destination for roller coaster enthusiasts from all over the world. The turn of the century saw big changes for Holiday World with its addition of the legend, a wooden roller coaster that would go on to make the list of the world's top 15 roller coasters every year since, and its decision to offer free unlimited soft drinks, becoming the first theme park in the world to do so. The park celebrated its 60th anniversary in 2006 with the opening of a new Thanksgiving section. Located in this new section was one of the fastest and longest wooden roller coasters in the world, the Voyage. The attraction of the Voyage pushed Holiday World's attendance past the 1 million mark for the first time ever in 2006. In addition to its thrill-inducing rides, Holiday World and Splash and Safari is known for its family-friendly atmosphere, being named the cleanest and friendliest park in the world. There's a huge difference in the feel you get when, when there's a person who really cares so much about something. Um, that park is our life. And